Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is March 1st, 2017, and this is our episode number 96. Today we're looking at a company called Homo Logistica. So this is a logistics company. Uh, it's not uh, a very small one by any means. And uh, if you find the Investor Relations website, uh, you will see the results here. Uh, and you will quickly realize that Humo owns holdings in other companies. So make sure to look at the one for Humo SIA here. So for the fourth quarter of 16, we do have the DFP, which is the standardized financial statement. And as always, we're going to look at its overall financial health, beginning with debt to equity. So how much does a company owe relative to how much that same company owns? And this we can find in the liabilities table. And here's the liabilities table. So take a look here. We have two pairs of columns. Uh, one's for the controlling company and the other's for the, for the consolidated. Uh, I think I'm more interested in the consolidated because it gives the overall picture of the company. If you've watched past episodes, you will have witnessed me hesitate between these two. And for no external reasons, really. And here, if you know better, drop a line. Um, uh, I, I am tending to, towards the consolidated for the very fundamental reason that this gives the companies every decision so if the company owns uh you know if the company itself looks good but it owns bad companies it should show up here so you take everything into consideration of course you know if if it's about uh, uh companies own through uh owning shares of it it, 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 of course, it's easy for them to, to get rid of them by selling and so on and so forth. But the decision has been made and it's here. So uh, this is where I'm, I'm... I know this is very basic and there's a reason the series called Naive Investor. But um, this is where I'm gravitating to right now. So in terms of uh, net equity, which is... Uh, a very fundamental measurement here. So we have five billion six hundred and seventy-five. And as most companies we're looking at now, at this point, I've I've looked at it. So I've looked at Homo. We I we do have some information here. So total liabilities. So this is it's interesting because the total debt here is larger than the liabilities here so what gives oh sorry uh yeah i'm just coming back from carnival so i'm i'm like kind of rusty here so we're talking about equity not liabilities five six seven five so five six seven five and you can see that it went down in a quarter there again it was 6109 and it's now 5675 so it, it went down in one quarter by a kind of significant number for a quarter but uh, these things they do float around and let's see all liabilities here so to find that we add current liability so 3393 and non-current, so that that'll be thirteen nine six three seventeen three five six. So immediately, pretty clear that the liabilities to equity is a little is around three. We'll come back to that ratio. <clears throat> But now let's look at debt. So debt are specific lines in the liability. So here you have empréstimos, financiamentos e debentures. So that's loans, financing, financing, and debentures. So that's definitely one. So one, four, 
six, eight, as we're always rounding to the nearest. So, arrendamento mercantil, it's not entirely clear if this is dead or not, at least to me. Certificado recebíveis, I don't know. Uh, derivative, suppliers, uh, salaries to pay, income tax, other taxes, dividends to pay, concessions, uh, payable to related parts, deferred uh, revenues, other liabilities, financial liabilities, and other payable bills. So there's a variety of things here. Some of them are arguably dead or obscure enough uh, <clears throat> for us to consider uh, as dead. But let's keep it very loose here. I mean, not loose at all. Let's only consider debt as such. So if you go to the non-current, meaning uh, the one for uh, after 12 months, uh, we can add 7055. So that's 8523. Let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, if we only consider this as debt, I mean, arrendamento mercantil would be even greater. I'm going, after this episode, I'm going to try to find out what they mean by this. It may be something debt like, but 8523. 8523 and oops, let me go back there. And so liabilities to equity will be liabilities to equity. So as we said, it's three, and debt to equity is 1.5. So what about these numbers? Uh, as a almost constant reminder, almost every episode so far, we remind ourselves that we're ideally looking for something between 0 and 0 0.5 here, as far as debt to equity. Uh, this is not a, 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 an unfail, unfailing uh, number. This varies by type of industry, and I think great investors, they they develop uh, a very beautiful sensibility to this number uh, according to the industry, sometimes according to the environment uh, uh, in terms of interest rate environment in the past years and, and, and what it looks like in the near future. Uh, you will see all kinds of points of view for this thing. So you go from a Warren Buffett who says, I don't look at macro, I completely don't even think about that. But then I'm sure it's very evident that he sometimes uh, goes outside that debt to equity of 0 0.5 in certain situations. And uh, certain industries such as insurance and banking uh, this number makes less sense than, say, for a logistics company as such as Homo. But when you see a debt to equity of 1.5, uh, it's certainly not pretty great. Uh, it's helpful if we look at other things. Um, so, in, uh, the earning power relative to the debt. And so 1.5 is really three times over what we're looking for. So Humu is out of contention, at least for me as an investment right now, okay? But let's look at, uh, since this is the uh, 2016 uh, full year here, uh, let's look at the current ratio. So this gives us uh, an idea of the near-term solvency. So it's how much money does the company have. Uh, so current ratio would, will be current assets. So ativo circulante here. So 2301 divided by 3393. 0.68. And this is a very bad number because it means the company... Uh, has less money to pay out than it estimates it's going to pay out. 
without even considering uh, any any unforeseen uh, events that may happen this next 12 months. So if this is below one, it means the company has less money than it knows it's going to have to pay out. So this is usually the company deals with this uh, by getting more loans or getting uh, or selling a hard asset, a non-current asset, uh, or sometimes by improving its <coughs> results within the year. Uh, and the further from one, the harder that'll be to, to happen. Uh, sometimes by not paying what it owes. So that take, takes the company uh, in the, the direction of bankruptcy. Uh, so these things can happen. And like in very extremely broad terms, unless you know better, uh, in which case you're probably not watching this video, uh, you avoid uh, becoming a partner at this company, which looks to be in danger. So what about the earnings here? So we can scroll down. Uh, usually the next table will, it will give you the earnings. So they are talking about a loss here. So they're talking about a loss of a billion and 53 million so okay so we are definitely look at, looking at a company that as a naive investor so to speak uh we must steer clear okay we have not looked at price but unless you're a special situation investor a company that's losing money that has three times debt uh as it has equity and it has less money than it will need to pay out over the next year is a highly dangerous company okay so i don't know just in terms of proximity here okay uh we looked at lojas americanas recently it just happens to be right below here it's a company with a very ugly debt to equity situation but the current ratio is, is positive, above 1.5, so there's some safety here. And as you can see here, is a company that has been over 10 years able to produce positive earnings, right? So it's really funny because, you know, on the newspapers, in, and because we, we are, uh, as citizens, uh, in touch with Lodges Americanas all the time here, you know, just walking past the stores and stuff. Uh, we are much more familiar with Lodges Americanas than with Humu, which is a logistics company. But, I mean, uh, Humu was able to lose a billion reais this last year, while Lodges Americanas made a profit of 200 million. So, Humu has a strong impact economically. Uh, unfortunately, this impact has been negative, at least in the last year. So uh, this is it for Homo this time. Uh, we continue uh, with our tradition of looking at companies that uh, are not to be invested in. And I've talked about this a few times since we have 96 episodes so far and I haven't... Uh, been enthusiastic about any company uh, I think the message here is we're look we're going to uh, a value investing it can even be a growth okay but it's always related to value to ascertainable value and we are using a very uh, very uh, thick margin of safety I think so if there's any reason to not to be unsure we avoid the company so you know uh people uh, warren buffett uh, has this the two rules of investment uh it's, number one is don't lose money and number two is uh don't forget rule number one and this is 
in other words, this is what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, that in Brazil, one out of in my books here, okay, one out of seventy companies uh, I have invested in. I have actually said yes, I'm investing in this company. Uh, so it's one out of seventy. So statistically, yeah, we have not looked. These are randomly uh, selected, uh, and statistically, we have not found one like that. But th the message is, if this it doesn't look good, don't do it. Okay, it, it, you can wait. You can wait a long time and be better off. I in the beginning, uh, of course, I am a beginner investor. But in the first couple of years, I. I you know, scratch the surface of investing. I just went without this uh, this safety, and the results were bad. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that great. So uh, we're really going for either you buy an index fund, and you're a passive investor, and you admit uh, that you're not going to really dedicate dedicate yourself to this. And uh, the greats say this is the ideal uh, setup for pretty much everybody. Uh, or you say, no, I'm really going to study this. I'm going to devote time to this. And this video series, I think it can help you in, in, in two ways. Number one, figuring out if, you, if this is fun for you. And I admit it, this, I think this may be fun for... Or one out of seriously fifty thousand people, one out of fifty thousand people will look at this and think, and think, "Wow, this is fun." Or if you don't think it's fun, uh, the index at today indexing with a low cost provider uh, is a good situation too, uh, because it's you won't have to think you will be free to do what you really like and over time it will do pretty okay for you so thank you very much for watching uh, and see you in the future episodes bye bye